let's talk about slicers in Google Sheets. What they can do, what they cannot do, and what we can do to mitigate those limits. Basically, slicers are like interactive filters that can manipulate your tables, your pivot tables, and your charts. Here we have a slicer for gender. It is taking this gender column in this table right here. And whenever we select a specific gender here, everything that is connected to this table will change accordingly, right? So we can select multiple, we can unselect everything, then there will be no data, you get the point. Well, although this might seem fine and dandy, uh, and it's very similar to slicers in uh, Excel, there are a lot of limitations that we have to understand. So first, let's create a slicer from scratch and understand how it actually works. First, I'll delete this one that we already have. Now, if I click on the table or on any of my pivot tables and I go to data and add slicer, it will automatically understand that uh, this is the main data source, that the actual data table that we're creating these pivot tables from is the data source. How do I know that? Well, on the right side, we can choose a column. And as you can see, there's uh, all the columns that we have in the original table. So I can select age, city, for example, if I select age, then I can select whatever ages we have, and it will work just like shown before. However, if we click anywhere besides our pivot tables or our table, and we add a slicer, then it doesn't really understand what is the data source here, and we have to manually explain to him what uh, the source is. So if we select that our pivot table, which is uh, this one right here, i3j7, is our source, then we can only choose the, th the two columns that we have in the pivot table, meaning that we cannot slice anything that is outside of this pivot table's boundaries. We can only take profession or average of income. And if we decide to use this profession slicer, we need to understand that only the chart associated with our pivot table is the one that is being manipulated, meaning that all other pivot tables and charts that are connected to them are not being affected. So we need to understand that when we create a slicer, if we select a pivot table, it automatically understands that we are trying to slice the whole uh, connected data source. So if we slice this data source, every other pivot table that is being created from the same pivot source will automatically uh, be sliced. But if we create a specific slicer for just a single pivot table, then the only the columns of that pivot table will be manipulated. We can only choose those columns and only the visualizations of that specific pivot table will be affected. So now, now that we understand how slicers work, let's discuss some of the shortcomings of Google Sheets slicers specifically. If we were to create a dashboard with, with visualizations in Microsoft Excel, the general practice is to have all of your pivot tables in one sheet and then have all of your visualizations in another one. But let's see what happens if we try to do this in Google Sheets. So we have our pivot tables here and I will try to copy this uh, chart into another sheet. Let's say this is my dashboard. We have a lot of uh, charts here. We'll ignore the style for now because this is not the point. So what happens if I try to create a slicer in this sheet right here? I'll add a slicer. So first it asks me what is my data source? Meaning that it doesn't automatically understand that this chart is related to the pivot table that is created in another sheet. So, okay, I can try to manipulate and specifically tell him that my data source is this master table right here, right? Okay. At first glance, it looks like it works because we can select all the columns that we can see here. And uh, let's try to slice gender and select only males. At first glance, nothing happens. It didn't really slice. But if we go back to our master sheet, we take a look here, nothing changes. Then we go back to our sheet with our visualizations. We can see that it reacts. 
but that's not really the behavior that we, we wanted to have because we wanted to react as soon as we click on a change for it to be uh, instant right if we go back to sheet one we go back here it changes as well that's the first thing the other thing is that if we take a look at our other visualizations which should have also been changed since, since we're trying to manipulate the master source that is connected to those pivot tables at first glance it's also not changed but look what happens if i click on the visualization and just drag it around it updates so this is some clunky behavior from google sheets we definitely don't want this uh, functionality in our dashboards we want it to be instant and we don't want to update every single chart by clicking on it right so how do we avoid this and in reality there is only one workaround let's delete everything we have here for now and that workaround is to have your all of your pivot tables in the same sheet as your visualizations you don't have to have the actual master data you can have the master data in a separate sheet but your pivot tables have to be in the same sheet so let me delete everything from here for now and let's create a brand new pivot table so we click insert pivot table then we select the existing sheet we go to our sheet 2 and let's create it over here now let's do the same exact thing that we did before so we take the profession for rows and then we have the income for values we have the averages that's one of our pivot tables and the other one by the way you can simply copy and paste the pivot tables and they will automatically understand what the data source is and the other one was not profession but the city great now if we create a visualization from here let's insert a chart if i recall it was a bar chart and the other one was a pie chart great and now let's see what happens when we create slicers from here from this sheet so i click on my pivot table on any of the two i click data add a slicer as we can see it automatically understands what the data source is our data source is in another sheet it's in sheet one but it already knows what the columns are so we take the gender we select male everything updates instantly so so that we don't have to really go around and click on the sheet and go back we can even hide the nice master sheet and uh, only have the dashboard and everything changes appropriately now let's go over the second problem of google sheets slicers which is that it, they don't really have uh, data connections let me show you what i mean by creating another pivot table so let's copy and paste our current pivot table uh, let's select genders no totals and then let's create a chart right so we have another chart and let's say we want this specific chart to not react to our slicers in fact we want this to be the only chart that doesn't react to all of our slicers let's say we have more charts here all of them react to our gender slicer but we don't really want this one to react because it makes no sense right because if we slice male or female then we only have a 100% of this chart and so it doesn't really make sense to have it we always want to see the overall distribution of these two so we don't want it to be connected to our uh, slicer so how do we achieve that if we were working with Microsoft Excel then there will be no problem since there's such a thing called data connections and we can specify which slicer is connected to which specific pivot tables and which are not and that makes life, life much easier in this scenario we cannot do that meaning that whatever is connected to the data source of this slicer would automatically change so following that logic we have to find a way 
for this chart not to be connected to our uh, main data source, which is in our hidden sheet right here. And the only way to do that is to copy this data source, to have another data source, and to create pivot tables from there. So how I like to do this is to, by simply having uh, some gaps with, between my original data source, simply copying whatever contents we have here, so that whatever new information we put in here, it will automatically be updated. Right, like this. And then we simply drag it down so that whenever we add new information, it will automatically have it here. And now we have two data tables. And we can actually create a new pivot table from this one. And since the data source of those pivot tables will be different, it will not react to other sources slicers. I hope that makes sense. So let's insert a pivot table to our sheet. Let's go all, all the way over here. And let's create a similar thing that we just did with our original data source. So we go gender for rows, income for values, and now we create our uh, visualization. Since there's no data connected to this chart, it's empty. And now let's see what happens if we play around with our original slicer. As we can see, nothing changes in this, in this one right here. So just to recap, when we create a slicer, it needs to understand what the data source is. If we connect it to a pivot table, it automatically understands that the data source of that pivot table is the source that we want to manipulate. But if we want to have several uh, visualizations and not all of them are connected to the same uh, slicer, so some of them we don't want to react to, to the slicers, then we have to connect them to a, a different pivot table that is being connected to a different uh, data source. So this is why we create a duplicate of our data source and then we create our pivot tables from there. And this way we can avoid having these problems. So thank you guys for watching this video. I hope it was informative. Uh, I know working with Google Sheets sometimes might be quite a headache, but there's pretty much a workaround for, for all of the uh, problems that you can encounter. So I've discussed everything that I personally know and that I've encountered with slicers, and uh, I'll continue making these videos about other topics in Google Sheets. So follow for more, don't forget to subscribe, and thank you for watching.